Hi guys, welcome to the second video under the selling learning platform, particularly the second video under the learn how to learn series in which I basically show you enough techniques to get around the year uh, on top of the, you know, the basic techniques that we already know, such as active learn, uh, active recall, space repetition, because I know those are heavily used and also actually used incorrectly. So what, what I've got today is how we can use, for example, football, you don't have to be a football fan to, to understand this, you don't even have to be interested in football, but uh how we can use football to understand how we can learn new topics all right so there are two sort of frameworks that come into mind when you want to be learning new topics the first one i've got here is bloom taxonomy which is basically a pyramid where you have the higher order learning here and the lower order learning here so most students are at this position here they're at the lower levels here so they just know how to recall and and, and whatnot this is how lectures actually teach as well, to be honest. They, they, don't, they don't do a great job in actually, you know, bringing things together. So you've got to do that job yourself, yeah? So low order learning counts as anything between remember and apply. And then analyze and evaluate, and a bit of apply as well, but depends on the situation, counts as higher order learning. And why do you want to be in high order learning, you might ask? Well, your brain, like I said before, thinks in relations, it thinks in networks. Your brain doesn't think, you know, oh, let me just write, uh, you know, a bunch of notes. Hopefully, if I just, you know, put them in Anki, I'll just learn them. You know, that's not how it works. Your brain likes to think first in terms of other relationships, other ideas, comparing those ideas, and then that strengthens everything else. So basically, your brain, if you, if you can get your brain to be here, your brain will naturally, your brain will naturally go down, go down the ranks and fill in the gaps itself. Yeah, I'm just going to pen out. So you you naturally get here once you've established this. Uh, so let me get into detail later about that. Now we've got solo taxonomy. So this is, uh, this is actually, I like this better to be honest. This one talks about how we bring in different ideas together to improve our learning. So essentially pre-structural means at this, at this moment in time, you know, what I just learned makes absolutely no sense. It's a, it's a load of waffle, nothing connected and i've got no idea what this means yeah this is what most students start at before they even go to a new topic i mean that's natural obviously then we've got uni unistructural this is mean this means you have an idea you understand like about that that particular concept up to the topic you know what for example gram positive bacteria means but you don't actually know why it's important yeah then you've got multi-structural which means you know what gram positive is you got a good idea of that you know what uh gram negative bacteria are you got a good idea of that. You uh, you know what antibiotics are used for. You know what you know. You know that fairly well. You can make a bit of connections with it, but you don't. You still don't know what the actual bigger picture is. Then relationship relational is the same thing, but you're linking it to other ideas that you already know about that particular topic. So, for example, if it's antibiotics, you'd know about um, sepsis, for example. Yeah, and then extended abstract is me means you. You bring all of what you just learned and even take it a bit further and apply into situations where you're expected to, you know, use what you've learned in, in, in new situations and actually think about what might be the most important course of action rather than another thing. For example, do I use this antibiotic over this antibiotic? Do I use this surgical procedure over this surgical procedure for a particular patient? Okay, so I'm going to use football now as a as an example of how you can see bloom taxonomy works in here and you can use this for any topic but i'm just picking football because it's a popular popular topic excuse me um popular topic and you know it's not that hard to get your head around yeah and so it's, sorry to anyone who's not interested in football but um so here with the, with this tactic board here okay you don't have to know football all right let's start with the basics there's 11 people here Okay, let's say you read about you read a bit more about the topic now. So what's a goalkeeper's position? All right, goalkeeper's position is to save the ball. Uh, it's supposed to pass to the defenders, maybe, maybe pass to the the attack, and just stop the ball from going in the net in the first place. Yeah. Um. So what I just did there was remember. All of that was remember. All I just did was recall and list things. Yeah, I don't actually know why I learned that in the first place. It doesn't really make sense. I just said, okay, this, I just accepted it. Yeah, um, the goalkeeper can save, pass, attack. All right, nice. Yeah, now it's about understanding now. Why does the goalkeeper do what he does? 
uh, to stop the ball from going in the net. All right, that's I'll get to it later. But the main idea is for the goalkeeper to stop the ball from going in the net. All right, that kind of makes sense. I kind of get the reason why he has to do that. Still not perfect yet, but fair enough. Now I can do about it can talk about location as well. Locate so what uh, you know the goalkeeper is located in front of the goal. Yeah, is there a reason for that? We'll find out. The centre back CB is located here. At the back, is there a reason for that? We'll find out. Striker, uh, the wingers, they're located here. Why is that? Well, if you know, if we recall their their roles, this guy's supposed to score, so that's probably why he's there. So that's remember and understand. So we so remember just listing things. Understanding is actually give a reason about those listing things. So like give a um, you know some evidence about why is it that the goalkeeper has to save pass and attack. Now it's all about applying. So, for example, in football, there's nine minutes in a, in a football game. At the end of the 90 minutes, let's say this team in particular wants to win. I don't know why they want to win yet, but let's just say they want to win. They want to score a goal. Do you expect the goalkeeper to be here in the 90th minute? Let's say they're one nil down and they really want a goal. Do you expect the goalkeeper to be stuck right here in the goal by himself? No, you kind of expect him to be up here. So this is applying it in new situations. What I've just did there was, was figure out what... In, in in any different given situation, how would things change? This is actually increasing in all the uh, you know all the learning, but still you know it's not the highest we can go. Yeah, let's talk about analyze now. Analyze and evaluate is the start of high order learning. So if this was LOL, which is low order learning, and this bit is high order learning. Forget about this now. This is more for PhDs. Um, this is how our brain wants to think. It wants to bring in ideas as well. And actually, you'd realize that. I don't know if you realize, but by the end of an exam where you've assumed you've learned enough and you've revised enough, you've actually kind of already, your brain kind of done that already, subconsciously kind of made links together. That's if you've like really studied and, and whatnot. But don't you want to do this in the first place? Don't you want to link in things from the beginning rather than, than you know, doing all of this, you know, work here and then you know, figure out the connections after. I'd rather do this first, get the idea first, and then come back to this. Because listen, you, you can learn it whenever you want, really. You can, if you if you have to memorize basic concepts, you can just put that on a on a Anki flashcard. If you can't conceptually memorize it enough, yeah. Let me just show you now how we could start with analyzing and evaluating. I've got two terms that I've done myself, uh, you know, I don't know if anyone's used it before, but I've got something called intra-learning and inter-learning. So now I'm going to compare the goalkeeper to the centre-back. What can the goalkeeper do that the centre-back can't? What can the centre-back do that the goalkeeper can't? Okay, well, the centre-back can use his feet. Yeah, the goalkeeper can also use his feet, but the goalkeeper can use his hands. The centre-back can't use his hands. Why can't the centre-back use his hands? Well, because it's only fair that if the goalkeeper is going to be in front of the goal, he can use his hands to save the ball. The centre back is out, is you know a bit far out. You don't really expect him to use his hands, otherwise that'll just not you know make the game not really fair. Yeah. So what I just did there was make a connection between, you know, two two ideas within the topic. Yeah, that's called intra learning. Let me show you now how we can use inter learning. Okay, this is the this is a you know same image on the left. I've got a new image on the right. Now I want you to compare these two things here. What makes this different to this? You can even be as basic as you want. I mean, this is blue, and this, these are red. This one says G, this one says GK. Is there a reason for that? Well, I don't know yet, but you find that out as you learn. There's something called the snowball effect. The more you learn about a topic, the more the easier it is to learn those little intricate details that you can learn for later, like two ATP equals two, you know, ADP plus P. You don't have to know about that, about that yet. You just you just know the general idea first and then get to that, to those little details, yeah? Let's get more detail now. This has one, two, three center backs. This has one, this should be a center back as well, but two center backs here. Is there a reason for that? So I'll just, I'm starting to compare now. What I'm doing here is multi-structural learning. I'm bringing more than one idea in, but I still don't know what the overall meaning is. Yeah? Is there a reason why he's doing three here and why he's doing four here? Well, maybe it's because, look, what about here and here? He's got his WBs, wing backs, up there in a the pitch. Maybe he, he wants to, this particular style of play wants to be more attacking and score a goal. This one here has his, you know, wing backs, the same thing here, at the back. 
So he might be one a bit more defensive. Now let's start evaluating. Yeah, this is the highest order of learning you can possibly do. In which situation would you want to use this more than this? I mean, like I just sort of figured out, if you've got more people up there in a pitch, it's nearer to the goal. Logically, you, you might assume that this is the uh, attacking style of play. Yeah, you might be right. This one's probably a more defensive style of play. In which situation would you want to be more defensive? Do you want to be more defensive when you're losing? No, you want to be more attacking because you want to score a goal to sort of compensate for your loss. Yeah? So what I just did there was, again, multi-structural and I've related it to the bigger picture because I want to win. Now, let me show you how you can even, you know, bring this up as many layers as you can. All right, let's say you want to win, right? You know, you want to use this uh, tactic because you want to win three point, uh, you know, win the game. Why do you want to win the game? You want to win the game because you want to get three points. All right, what's, what does three points mean? You know what I mean? Okay, so there's points in the league. If you earn enough points, you can, you know, compete for, you know, to win the league at the end of the, the season. Why do you want to win the league? You want to win the league because... Um, you want to win the trophy. Why do you want to win a trophy? If you win more trophies, your club becomes more prestige and, and more famous. Why do you want to, you know, become more prestige? Because if you win the trophy, you automatically enter the Champions League. Why do you want to enter the Champions League, you ask? The Champions League is a prestigious tournament in which all the best European teams compete against each other for a, you know, prestigious trophy. Why do you want to win that trophy? Because if you win that, you're, you're essentially, you know, your club, you know, enters the history books and becomes famous and whatnot. So I just did several layers, 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 layers to the whole big picture, starting so, you know, small about these details here. But you might actually, I suggest you start here first before, you know, when you're pre-learning a topic, I actually suggest you naturally find the connections here first. You don't have to be right. Yeah. You don't have to be right about the groups that you make, the connections. You might be, you might say this connect, this topic links to this topic, but then later you might find out that actually wasn't relevant at all. That's fine because your brain actually wants to think like this. It wants to think in terms of, it wants to think in terms of networks. It, it remembering and all that doesn't really help the brain sort of be challenged enough. You want to sort of enter a state of like confusion and 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 and, and effort. That's what your brain wants to think about. Yeah, so if you naturally find the links between the topics first, then you could go down the pyramid naturally. Your brain will actually fill in the gaps naturally itself. You can do any remainder things in Anki if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't stick in your head. For example, uh, the lifespan of red blood cell, which I remember is, I think, 120 days. So hopefully you get the gist of it. Um... Let me know if that makes sense in the comments. If it doesn't make sense, I could probably produce another video about an actual example. Uh, just quickly, like an example from biochemistry just for about now is, for example, uh, six classes of enzymes. From the top of my head is something like, you know, oxyreductase, uh, isomerases, lyase. Intra-learning would mean compare the two ideas together. For example, what's the difference between oxyreductase, sorry, oxyreductases and um, lyases? All right, and in what situation, for example, would you want to use oxyreductases rather than elias? Well, you might be thinking, all right, because I know respiration was a lot of redoxes, yeah, reducing electrons, gaining electrons, all that stuff. You might want to use an oxyreductase rather than elias. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let me know in the com comments if it doesn't. I might consider making a more like an actual example about you know what we learn in medicine, for example. But you should be already sort of grasped the fact already about how we can bring topics in between the actual topic and then other topics, for example, other essays. You might want to bring essay 5 and essay 67 together rather than just learn from 1 to 80. Yeah. So thank you very much, guys. And um, yeah, like, comment and all that nonsense. Thank you very much.